Welcome back. I'm Lee Bluini. This is our let's play Amnios for the Amiga. This is now our third planet and already I'm exploding like mad. This time I was planning on showing off how the bonus structure works. Those weird looking things with all those colors and blue colors inside, uh, that was the father ship. The father ships actually because with every new planet we get one father ship more. And to get bonus you not only have to destroy everything around you, you have to, and I'm dead again, collect DNA which comes in many fabled colors, drag it to those father ships, you have, we have all of them at the same time. On the minimap the father ships are bright yellow, so you can find them again if you want. And as soon as we drag DNA to one of those father ships, the father ship starts building bonus items like weapons and shields. And the, those orange globs, globes are the DNA. Sadly we can only drag either one DNA or one humanoid, like I am doing right now. And a feather ship can save one humanoid and carry one DNA. Now the thing is, since the feather ships are careening randomly across the map, you have to somehow survive catching them. Luckily they give you more energy back if you catch them. On the other hand, almost everything you see on the map can kill you instantly if you touch it too, for too, too long. So it's really not that good, especially since it's really hard to stay inside one of them. So, uh, again killing everything that moves and not moves around you, trying to destroy the planet it itself. And you may have noticed uh, those blue things with green and orange wings coming close to us up uh, sometimes. Those are snatchers. If I'm trying to save humanoids, those snatchers will start pestering me. Uh, the manual claims they will only annoy you if you're dragging humanoids with them because the snatchers try to get at them and if you're carrying them away you know, they get angry. But with uh, what I found out this time, if you saved humanoids then the snatcher that was chasing that particular one will start chasing you instead. So the more humanoids you save, the more snatchers come after you. Now this is important because snatchers are invincible. There are two, three of them already and we are dragging DNA behind us. Here I am trying my best to actually get a father ship so we can finally get bonus. So now this one father ship starts building stuff for us. And since neither the game nor the manual tells us for how long this will do, I'll attempt in the meantime to destroy something more. And every time I stop, hordes of enemies and projectiles and whatever else descend on me and make me explode. Yeah, great. Of course, moving is dangerous too, with all that stuff hanging around. And, yeah. And as you can see, we spawned, we spawned right inside the enemies and the enemies took off almost all, all of our energy instantly. Yeah, that's great. This is only planet 3 and it's already this giant clusterfuck of projectiles, enemies and structures on the ground you can sometimes touch or fly over and sometimes they kill you like every other enemy too. And again, one enemy drains almost all of our energy, the next enemy touches us and we are dead. And again, yeah. Slowly you may notice a certain pattern in this game. 
And this game is pure, undiluted bullshit. Finally we make some leeway and exploding stuff, but of course I die. A few salvos more and something and Snatcher touches us from behind and we're dead again. Again, sometimes, like these, this large green dome thing, we just, well, find out that we lose points if we shoot at it, as if our points are our ammunition, with the exception as if our points reach zero, we can still fire, as well, I have no idea why this exists. And as you can see, in my attempt to find out if I can harm this dome, or if it is invincible like so many other stuff in the background, I'll already explode it three times in a row. Here again father ships, now comes the funny part, finding out which one of our four father ships carry the weapon. Again I am try dragging DNA, trying to get to another father ship, trying to get more stuff. But of course since the father ships randomly change direction, this is pretty damn hard. So now I gave something to something, but because of course because all those father ships touched each other, I'm not sure which one got the DNA. And I have blue DNA in a free father ship. So I try to get to it, but of course I'm ramming everything that can be rammed this time around and die. And then the hunt for the father ships is on again. Really, this kind of shoot em up really suffers from, from the control scheme. scheme. You have to, uh, remember, you have to accelerate in the direction you're facing. And if you want to slow down, you have to brake in the opposite direction. And if you want to change direction, yeah, well, left and right like normal. The problem with this is, of course, if you want to shoot at something, then you have to really be really, really careful not to slowly drift into it and die. Of course, if you want to stay away from it, then you have the additional problem. You have to change direction first, then accelerate, then deaccelerate and turn around. If you don't do this, then you're just careening off course like one of those father ships and you end up someplace completely different. Of course, trying to avoid shots and enemies... Well, let's just say it's the opposite of being easy. Remember, if you see a shot coming for you, you have to change direction, accelerate away from the shot, then you have to change direction again and brake. If you don't do any, uh, don't do these steps or do the steps in the wrong, um, the wrong order. If you do it in the wrong order, then you will most likely die because all those shots hit you. Then you will drift into the enemy which has fired upon you, and the enemy will kill you. Well, that's also my experience, and as you can see, here again a snatcher touches us, lots of shots hit us, and I'm completely helpless because the shots are all around me. So even if I had superhuman reflexes and could do all the necessary changes to my course instantly, I would have still gotten hit several times. Here we have a father ship that actually produced something for us and now the next challenge getting to the right father ship to get what we got well you know what I mean also we have another humanoid behind us and we die and I'm trying to bring this little humanoid to our to a free father ship so we can get on with this as you may notice above, we almost killed all of the brains available on this ugly planet full of skin and organs, I suppose. But almost about the planet is all but the planet is still rather healthy and we didn't kill most of the hearts. Uh, that's the heart on the left. 
healthy is that weird bolt of lightning. The brain was the brain. Well, now it's gone, and we have there are a lot of eyes. Well, yeah, the, the eye means we have not. Oh, finally, we got our first bonus, and of course, I'm. Incredibly, incredibly unlucky and instead of a weapon I get this impressive sounding shield. As you can see it's well rather short-lived but well it does protect you from everything kind of neat actually. Now if you could get it reliably more reliably that would be even better and as you can see I'm slowly giving up on trying to get more weapons because in this game trying to get your other weapons is kind of self-defeating because in the time you you will need to invest to get those weapons you could have already killed half the planet and rally. Your best shot is simply trying to stay away from everything that harm you and then destroy everything you can hit on the ground. Of course then we have this little slight problem is that sometimes the stuff you're hitting is invincible and you will only notice this after you shot half a minute at it in vain. And sometimes it turns out what you're shooting at is just really really sturdy. And again, I'm dead. Yes, dying is the thing I'm doing mo uh, most in this game. You will also notice sometimes I'm dying fast enough I can't even get shots, uh, shots off. And if uh, you see now that I'm trailed by three snatchers, all of them invincible, and because three snatchers sometimes block all my shots, I'm literally dying in vain sometimes, just dying repeatedly without... Oh, finally, I got something, an ace soccer, one of those famous bombs, and I saved another humanoid that makes three, I think. Because right now I'm not only dying all the time, I'm also trying to do what the manual told me to do in using the extra weapons. Sadly, I don't know if it's the game not working or the manual lying or my emulator, but neither my enter button nor my spacebar are working. Well, they are working, I know this, but they don't activate these flimsy little green bomb thing I have available. Well, sad, but it appears we still have to rely on our normal onboard weapon and oh god that was another clusterfuck. And again I haven't even noticed what killed me there. Okay, that's a bit funny here. I think I'm getting numb here. All this death and destruction and it's really draining. I mean look at that. Sure, slowly I'm making headway and this I can't believe this. Immediately respawned and dead in about a second. Well, oh, that's Amnios for you. And again, three snatchers are following me around. Even though the manual stated they are only supposed to do this if I drag humanoids with me. But as it turns out, apparently saving the humanoids counts as dragging them around. And so the snatchers try to impede my progress. So note to self, next time around I think I should do my best to avoid saving humanoids because if I already have trouble with three of them 
uh, think about the later levels when, uh, when we have a half dozen or more father ships and the corresponding number of humanoids running around. And of course this means the corresponding number of snatchers trying to get at us. And again, we have something here that's invulnerable. And together with... and again I'm dead. Sometimes there are that many enemies around me, I'm not r even really sure what killed me. Yeah, again. And of course the snatchers are right next to me and they touch me to death. I respawn and the snatchers touch me to death. So respawn and uh, oh it looks like I survived. Ah, but there are more enemies around to help the snatchers out. What's really annoying is I can't even make any headway uh, along the level because the goddamn blue things, flies, monster flies, <sighs> are blocking my shots half the time and sometimes they just kill me fast enough I can't even shoot. I had, while I made the recording, actually times where I started hammering the fire button again because I feared it stopped working but what actually happened was it just looked like I wasn't shooting because those goddamn blue things were sucking down my shots like mad always exactly at the point where I was firing it. I know it's just random chance but it really nearly makes Amnios unplayable. Right now I'm pretty sure I'm doing something wrong because without that infinite life sheet I would simply get stuck. Well to be honest I think I, I think I would get stuck back in level one already because holy shit look at that even if I'm flying away the little snatchers just slowly catch up to me and if I stay just one second too long, they are already there and kill me. I s suppose theoretically you could still win this level uh, honest if you uh, you have superhuman reflexes you can at least avoid some of those shots. If you stay around the father ships the entire time and somehow if you are soothsayers where you can reliably follow them when they change your directions and of course you have to avoid the humanoids to make the snatchers stay away from you yeah it could be doable of course as soon as you try to harvest DNA to get better weapons this shit happens and you are I'm Okay, to be fair, if you can reliably follow the father ships around, then I guess you could reliably harvest bonus weapons for you. Ah, and I'm dead. Do I even have to say I'm dead? Sometimes I can't even finish a full sentence because I'm dying so fast, I would have to say I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, with like some kind of stuck record plate or something. Well, at least the numbness prevents me from cursing all the time. Well, I was pretty calm, damn riled up when I recorded the footage. But luckily, I spent the weekend doing something completely different. So I'm not completely mad with rage right now. Instead, I'm relaxed. I can just send an amused smile to the screen while the snatchers kill me over and over again, like they have some kind of personal grudge against me. Again I'm trying to find out if this thing is destructible or not, but then I'll just destroy the um, veins or whatever that is supposed to be around it. Sometimes it's actually twice as helpful destroyer to destroy this, this stuff since some of the structures can send out projectiles to, in, to get at you but really most of the time 
all you can do is move out of the way and try to run every time you see an enemy moving in your field of view. What I'm doing right here now is, well, suiciding myself to at least destroy something because I'm pretty sure I would it would take me literally hour, hours to finish this level in a conventional way without any cheese. Again, the ring of this stupid blue thing touches me and I'm dead. Then one I'm already dead again. Yeah. As I said, because you're not invincible when you get here, after you get hit, you can lose your energy basically in one hit if you stay too close to an enemy. Which we remember since you can't move freely this gets kind of annoying fast. Couple that with not ex not every not knowing every time what exactly you can destroy and which what is just a background detail, you get really fast in situations where you either run away the entire time trying to avoid getting hit but not making any headway towards the end of the level or you get in situations where you die over and over again trying to destroy something. In this case at least it's optically helpful if you look closer you see that this red stuff is basically infesting the blue stuff so as long as you concentrate fire on everything that's red like those mouths shooting bullets at you or the, this red veins growing out of the ground then you're sure to destroy something important. Of course there's also all this other moving stuff which isn't red and it also counts. I have to say it's kind of neat that most of those weird structures form gigantic faces Sad. I'm just sad that I'm often not really noticing it until it's gone simply because I'm dying fast enough to oh well basically I'm missing everything on account of giant explosions taking up most of my concentration and the screen. Again we have found, found another DNA but at this time I, st I wanted to stop fooling around and finish the level. After all I died already about a hundred times or several hundred times is more likely and again most of the planet is still healthy since we wasted all this time trying to save humanoids and get bonus weapons and as a thanks we got well a shield and a bomb which doesn't really help me since the shield was used up almost as fast as my normal energy and the bomb well let's just say after this mess is over I'll go through the manual again, looking if there was some weird bomb key I kind of I overlooked. The last time I looked, as I said, spacebar and enter were supposed to open a menu to change between weapons, but apparently neither shields nor bombs count as weapons, which is kind of sad because this may, means if I, want, if I want to show up the clusterfuck of a bonus system more in another level I not only have to fight with those stupid fire ships again I also have to evo try to avoid the DNA colors I n now know produce shields and bombs the trouble with this is of course many colors produce many bombs and 
I'm not really sure there even are non-bomb related weapons. I can't remember anything mentioned. On the other hand, it's pretty easy to lose track of stuff like bonus weapons if you're constantly under siege. Optically and mentally with barrages of shit flying at your ear from every side. The really weird thing is those little flying things called wasps are neither tile of the great menace of the Onko block I'm supposed to destroy, nor are they. Well, they're obviously. Ob ob let's let me start again. Obviously, they are enemies. They attack us and stuff. But wasps are si simply a life form that has nothing to do with the Onko block. They are just there to attack us. Which is kind of weird if you think about it. Why did Psygnosis invent classes of enemies which have nothing to do with the enemy we are fighting? And then they have uh, have some fighters. It's kind of redundant. Here is this enemy, but it's not the enemy. But it will attack you, so it's your enemy. That's uh, that's some fine logic right there. Well, now I'm finally destroying more and more parts of the hearts. But of course the snatchers are still there to kill us. And as you saw, just saw, even that one small salvo took almost all of our energy and whatever hit us right next after it destroyed us immediately. Again snatchers are touching us and then killing us. It's really kind of hard trying to shoot at something and avoid all this shit. I have to say, if it weren't for Amnios really high difficulty curve, I'm suppose it would be a bit boring by now. Essentially you have to do always exactly one thing shoot everything. But as I now slowly notice, except for more and more bizarre faces on the ground there, the patterns are always the same. Nothing new. We get even the same basic enemies in level 3, level 2 and level 1. Hopefully there will be something new, but I don't think we are that lucky. What I'm trying to get at here is the planets may change and show us something new and different every time, but basic enemies like Snatchers, those weird warm like things, they are essentially the same. I think the warm like things look different, but they move and fight exactly the same as the ones in the, on the other planets. The wasps are of course always the same and in one level we have blue brains clustering together to get us and this we have red and blue spell blood so it looks slightly different and that, that's what is, that was it. Even the bosses are pretty similar. We had a giant bug in level 1, we had a giant bug in level 2, and now we have a giant bug in level 3. It's kind of weird considering how strange and colorful the intro was and what a clusterfuck the levels themselves can be and how different and creative the backgrounds can be and the versions of the Onko block we have to destroy. But everything else is incredibly similar. It's it's as if the game tries to either bore us to death or frustrate us to death. Well, even though everything looks astonishingly similar, at least it can't be boring if you die all the time. I'm pretty sure someone working at Psygnosis fought like that. On the other hand, well, let's just say 
at least it makes fighting those things pretty simple because the tactic is always the same. You stay, have to stay away from them, you have to shoot in the general direction you know they will come from, and as soon as they are in view you have to run away. Something which I hear demonstrate is not that easy since I'm failing and failing and failing again and again. Also, again, normal enemies are still around, normal structures are still around, you can practically try to you know, destroy the planet even further while you are fighting the last ditch effort of the, of the planet to destroy you, but sooner or later you face it. The only way to even have remotely a chance at beating this thing is running away, changing direction, fire a bit, then changing direction again and run away. Of course, sometimes you accidentally ram other enemies or their projectiles, and then you're dead either way, but if you want to play this, please don't make it that easy for the enemy like I am doing here. But really, at this point, I was not only frustrated but also confused because for the hell of, hell of me, I couldn't find out how you supposed to... Oh, I've won. Well, let's just say three humanoids rescues and we are on to another planet. A planet that looks exactly like the one we just left. Well, great. This is another thing the game really annoys me with. Some planets just repeat just with different names. But Maybe it gets better again. <sighs> Onward to Planet 4. Yay!